Okay, Nehemiah, going 9.38. Because all this, we made a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests sealed unto it. Now those that sealed, from chapter 9 into 10, Nehemiah, the Tarshua, the sons of Hechaliah, Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pasher, Amariah, Malchuthah, Hashu, Shebiah, Malak, Harum, Merimah, Obadiah, Daniel, Gineath, Baruch, Meshulam, Adela, Majemin, Methbel, Bigal, Shemaiah, and all these were the priests. The Levites. Remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. The Levites, both Jeshua, the son of Azina, Benai of the sons of Enadad, Kadmiel, and their brethren, Shadabaniah, Hodajiah, Keliah, Peliah, Anna, Melchah, Michael, Rehob, Hashabadiah, Zachar, Shirdadiah, Shibadiah, good names, Hodjiah, Benai, Benuai, the chief of the people, Parash, Path of Moab, interesting name, Elam, Zatu, Benai. The people don't make fun, you know, you're not pronouncing those names right. Probably people never even read the Bible going through this list. Give it a shot. Bunai, Asgad, Bebile, Adonijah, Big Baal, Aden, Atter, Hezja, Azer, Hodajah, Hisham, Bzi, Harpha, Ananoth. Now that's a man's name, but it's also a city where Jeremiah was. Nebai, Meshvash, Mishulam, Hezer, Marjish, Baal, Zadok, Jedua, Bethiah, Hannah, Anias, Hosea, Hananiah, Heshbub, Hashith, Pilha, Shobek, Mium, Hashabaniah, Mashiel, Ahijah, Hanan, Anan, Moak, Haram, Benoah. You say, well, why why'd you read through that? I mean, you have a hard time reading through those. Why'd you read that? By every word of the Lord. I don't think the Lord is going to stand up in heaven and say, all right, we're going to stumble for not pronouncing those names correct. All right, 28. And the rest of the people. I can pronounce that. And the rest of the people. The priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the nethnos. Notice how they keep showing up. And all they that have separated themselves from the people of the land unto the law of God. Now, go back to chapter 9, verse 2 real quick. We read this last night. Or the other night. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. And then we got the long history lesson. What happened is, in the beginning of chapter 9, they're going to serve God. They want to do right. And then they get a history lesson of all the wrong that Israel has done. How they provoke God in anger and how God's anger has brought them into captivity. How it's brought them through the book of Judges. Uh, you know, this nation came against them. God is Savior. Then they did right, repented. And then, you know, and when we come to Nehemiah chapter 10, they sealed this down. They had foreseen what has happened as a result of sin, iniquity, and rebelling against God. And they're saying... Through this chapter today, beside what we have all heard and learned, we're going to set ourselves, we're going to seal ourselves, we're not going to do that. We're going to do right. That's what history will teach you. You can learn from history. Any Jewish person today who is darkened in, in the synagogue today is not really reading the history of the law, else they would be seeing the power of God and seeing the destruction. And when they read Isaiah 53, they look at Isaiah 53 as the serpent, after the suffering servant 
as the Jewish person, and the one doing the, the punishment is the Gentiles. They don't see the Messiah, Jesus Christ. How can you say they look forward to Jesus? When the scriptures say, no, they didn't. Isaiah 53 speaks out, folds out who Jesus Christ was. They didn't see it. And the people are looking at the sins in Nehemiah 10 of the nation. We don't want to do it. Why? We have been blessed by God to come back from the captivity. We are back in our land and we don't want to leave it again. We want all God's protection. We want all God's love. We want God. Verse 28, separate themselves unto the people of the land and the law of God. Separation will get you right with God. For the Christian, you got to tell that those that are unsaved, hey, listen, I may have to deal with you, but I'm not going to fellowship with you. I'm separated. I'm called out. Their wives, their sons, their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding of what? Chapter 9. The results of sin. They claimed to their brethren, their nobles, what we just read, all that names, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law. Now listen, that God's law, for the Old Testament Jew, if you did not obey the law, you were cut off, you would go to hell, you would not be considered anything of the promises of the land. You did not have that right of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That rich man went to hell and said, Father Abraham. He has no name, that rich man. And he's forever today burning in hell. Is that not a curse enough? And that the, the Jewish people, uh, Nehemiah chapter 10, says, besides the fact is, well, if we do not follow and obey God, we are going to be cut off by God. And even so, we're going to make a curse of ourselves. Both a eternal damnation into hell and a present fleshy curse that we don't do right. You know, admonish us, kick us out, don't have anything to do with us. We won't be your brethren. Or like a Jew today that receives Christ as a Savior, or a man that's of the Islam faith and receives Christ. They are opposite, they are dead to his family, to their relatives, and to all. Too bad Christians don't see that to those who are not of Christ. They claim to, to the brethren, to the nobles, to enter into a curse. That's not good, but it's good. Into an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses. So that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There's no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's no Acts, uh, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, the Revelation. You know what the people are looking at right now in Nehemiah 10? They're not looking to Jesus. They're not looking to Calvary. They're looking, this is our land. And we want to live in it, and we want to please God, and we want God to be pleased with us. That, that's present right now. To do his commandments of the Lord our of the of the Lord our Lord and his judgments and his statutes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, I mean Numbers, Deuteronomy. And that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, the heathen, nor take their daughters for our son. Now, if there is a thing in the Bible about mixed marriage, it is definitely 100% sure that Jewish person was not to marry a heathen. Genesis and Revelation. One thing sure about who not to marry is that Jewish person to marry an outside Jew Jewish person. And yet that's the sins of Israel. That is the sins of Solomon. 
We dealt with it in Ezra. We're going to deal with it in Nehemiah. They married outlandish women. They married strange women. That don't mean that, you know, they got extra arms and eyeballs sticking out of the back of their head and they got three legs. No, strange women, is they're not of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had learned what happened to Solomon. It drove Solomon away from God. We don't want that. And we can go and ask mixed mixed marriage, but we're not going to do that. But for the Jewish person, absolutely sure. Don't you marry. And it was even in the law for a Jewish person. If you're of Judah, you marry into Judah. If you're of Benjamin, you marry of Benjamin. Zebulun does not go into Asher. Dan does not go into Levi. There was, yes, strict marriage standards of the people of Israel. Take their daughters for our, our sons. And if the people of the land bring where, you recognize that word, hardware, software, or any victuals, that's food, stuff like that. I think there used to be a dog food when I grew up, tender victuals. Food. On the Sabbath day to sell. That's the seventh day. Jewish people have the Sabbath day, not the church. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. Oh, okay. God said to the Jewish person, Sabbath day, you rest, nobody works. Except you bring your, 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 your animals out to drink and you, know, you feed them. That was allowed. And the law, even with tradition, you can go so far. But do you see that Sabbath in the holy day? And there's a place in the Gospel of John... It says, and it was a high day. And they will say that Jesus died on Good Friday and the next day was the Sabbath. No, that high day is another holy day given to the nation of Israel. you got to study your Bible. That holy high day would have been Wednesday. Three days and three nights would bring you to the first day of the week. So right there in the scriptures, we see the gospel of John being explained to us. Holy day. And that there were plenty of holy days. There were holy years. There were holy weeks. And that they should leave, uh, wait a minute, holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction, that's the only time that word shows up, of every day. Now, I'm not sure, but it looks to the jubilee that's found in the law. At a point of year in Jewish history, there was a period of time that everybody was relieved of their debts. If you became a servant because you owed money, you were set free. And there's much about that in the law. Also, we made ordinances for us. All right, here's something extra they added. To charge ourselves yearly with a third part of a shekel for the service of the house of our God. They said, you know what, Lord? We're going to make a thing right now. We're going to say, every year we're going to give a third of a shekel so that you can paint, fix the rocks, redo the pots, and whatever you need, we're going to give money to upkeep that temple. That's the people saying that. It's not the government. That's not church and state. People said, we want to do God so right. We're going to make it a stair now. We're going to give to the church. Building. That's what it is. It's a building. They're the church. They're a, gather a church is a gathered assembly. For the building. For the showbread. That went out every morning. Well, you got to have the the, the 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 flour, the oil to do it. Cost money. And for the continued meat offering, and for the continued burnt offering, and for the Sabbath, plural, of the new moon, that's the first day of every month for the Jewish people, for the feast, for the holy things, and for the sin offering to make, an atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of God. It costs money to do those things. The church only wants money. Well, 
they have electric bill, they have a water bill, they have probably have a sewer bill, they have a, a maybe a tax bill, uh, utility bills. They got to pay the carpenters and the painters and people like that if, if they don't have anybody in the church to do that work. If you got buses and vans, you got to pay for gasoline to go pick them up. God is not going to Saturday night hold a gas thing to a, to a church van and pump it with gas while everybody's sleeping. If you think God's going to do that, you're going to get down the road and that van's going to run out of gas. And if you think, well, okay, God's going to supply for the electricity on God's great behalf, you're going to be sitting in church service and the lights are going to go out. With a bill that says payment due. Pass due. And we cast the lots. That's a form of drawing straw, straw. The white rock. Odd number. Even number. Any many mo. Among the priests. And the Levites. And the people for wood offering. So who's going to bring the wood for the brazen altar? All right. They're going to draw lots. They're going to say, okay, this group of people on... The first day, there's people on the same. And I don't think the lots is because the people don't want to do it. I think everybody's volunteered. We can't have everybody bring wood. <laughs> we're going to have a big wood pile. All right, calm down, people. Okay, we're going to have to set a standard here. On a chosen time, let's see who's going to do it first. At another chosen, we'll see who's going to do it next. And, you know, too much. I think they love the Lord and they want to do right. I could be wrong. To bring it into the house of our God. What's the wood for? The brazen altar. After the house of our fathers, at times appointed. So see, at times appointed, year by year, somebody needs to be in charge. To burn upon the altar of the Lord our God, as is written in the law. What the law says we're going to do, that's what they're saying. And to bring, now here comes offerings. And to bring the first fruits of our ground. Olives, grapes, wine, wheat, barley. And the first fruits of our fruit of all, all trees. Prunes, whatever they got. Figs. Year by year unto the house of the Lord. So that first harvest went to the priest, went to the Lord. When you're out there, you got that tomato garden. You look at how oh, they're turning red, finally turning red. Oh, look at their red. I'm going to go out and pick them. That's God's first. You get the next round. You get the next round. Patience. And the firstborn of our sons. Now, that's not to kill them. That's my firstborn son. That's the one given to God. That's my inheritance. And if he gets married, doesn't have a child, his brothers are to raise up that, that woman he marries, to raise up a name. The authority. Esau did not take no stock into that first. Oh, I'd sell for a mess of beans. And God hated him. Reuben lost it because he slept with one Jacob's wife. For the firstborn of the son and of our cattle. As is written in law. You see how serious they are with the law. And the firstlings of our herds. And of our flocks. To bring to the house of our God. Unto the priests. That minister in the house of our God. And the priests got the meat. Got the hides. Got the fur. Got whatever came from that animal. The best fortune. Went to the priests. The best oils. Went to the priests. That was their livelihood. Man, if pastors and churches lived upon what the people brought, they starved to death. They've starved. And the priests, the sons of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. With the Levites, take tithes, 10%, that's Old Testament. Tithes are Old Testament. Tithes are... I can't say under the law because Jacob gave tithes. The church age, we're given to what you want to give God. 
what you are able to give God. Even if it's above or beyond or a little less. That woman that brought her two mice, that wasn't 10%. That's all she had. What do you do with that? And Jesus Christ praised her. She gave above and beyond because she wanted to do And Jesus had remarked that woman in the Bible. If there's two places every preacher should preach about in once in his lifetime, or three, he should preach about Anna, he should preach about that woman giving her two mice, and the Bible says about Mary. Because he said, wherever this is written and wherever this is read, this shall be a memorial to her, giving what she had for my death, burial, and resurrection. The uh, lives, tithes, and Levites shall bring up the tithes of the tithes unto the house of God, our God, and to the chambers, into the treasure house. What's that tithe of tithe? When you tithe to the priests and the Levites, the law prescribed for them to tithe what you gave of your tithes. And the tithes of the priests were actually burnt on the altar, and they were not to be eaten. Fully and wholly burnt. So if the leader of your church, seminar, whatever you call, if he does not put into the collection plate, he's violating scripture. Because the church says you're supposed to give willingly and wantonly. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offerings of the corn. That's not corn like corn on the cob. That's, you know, wheat and all that. Of new wine. That's pure grape juice. That's fresh squeeze. That's better than orange juice. I don't know if they did it with their feet, but... And of oil, olive oil. Unto the chambers. Now there were chambers, Solomon built chambers and room. There are chambers built in the temple. What are those chambers for? Clothing, stocks, supplies, wheat, oil, it would be like, uh, we're running out of oil for the candlestick. Go down to the, to the candlestick oil room, whatever you want to call it, and get some bread. I'll give them an easy name. Uh, Zadok, the priest, yeah. Uh, my priestly outfit is looking a little... Go down to the priestly garment room and get yourself another one or see whoever to get another one. Priest, I brought some more corn from my field. That goes down that room over there where the corn is. That's all it is. You see that in a grocery store or a store. This area is canned goods. This area is for soda. This area is for spaghetti. This aisle, this is the frozen fruit aisle. This is where you get your meat. This is where you get your hacksaw. That's what the temple is. Each room had, there was actually storage at the temple. Chambers where all the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests that ministered and the porters and the singers, we will not forsake the house of our God. We're going to take care of, watch, the priests. We're going to take care of the porters. The people will take care of the gates. And we're going to take care of the singers are being paid by the people giving to sing praises to God. By offerings, by giving. 